Now, there are a number of common plating defects that we're going to be talking about in this Take 5 series where we, we take five to seven minutes to give you some actionable items that you can use on the in the uh, printed circuit board fabrication arena to solve common defects that reduce your yields and, of course, cost you money. As you can see, today we're going to be focusing on peeling, you know, where copper peels from the surface, and then also on another anomaly called uh, pits and, and mouse bites. And then later on in, in the series, we'll, we'll have parts two and three. Uh, we will cover additional plating defects and so on and so forth. Now, plating defects, and you'll be seeing some of these discussed in the future, such as uh, dome plating, jagged edge plating, et cetera. But today, I really want to focus on copper adhesion problems, which is the, the top, uh, top area right here, and also things like pitting, which can also be uh, discussed with us on, in terms of uh, house bites. Yes, copper to copper peeling. This is really a, a disconcerting situation if it happens. You've already put a lot of money and time and effort to fabricate the circuit board up to this point. You come out of your electrolytic or your electrolyst copper plating process, and you find out that the plated copper peels from either the laminate surface or from the uh, electrical surface and it becomes very very disconcerting and of course at that point it's very difficult to rework the board and most likely that board at this time will be most likely scrapped. So what, what happens in situations like this? Why do we have peeling? There's a number of factors that we list here but I really want to talk about first of all identifying your job is to identify where the peeling is coming from. Is it the electrolyst copper peeling from the laminate or is it the electrolytic copper peeling from the electrolyst, because that's going to trigger a whole different mechanism of how you solve this problem. Regardless, one of the first things I look at is inadequate cleaning. Did I, did I not clean the copper surface? Did I did not uh, do a good job of removing things like oxidation? Did I have issues with uh, poor overexposure of the photoresist that may have caused uh, additional uh, materials to lock into the copper surface, thus causing a barrier. All of these things have to be looked at. But again, your situation is you've got to find the area of where the root cause is. And that's always the, the difficulty with troubleshooting. Now, a good example, while we have good examples of electrolytes, the cleaner conditioner is a, is a very important aspect of the process as it helps enhance the absorption of the palladium catalyst to the surface. However, some of these cleaner conditioners have such a strong affinity to attract palladium to the copper that we end up getting too much palladium on the surface and we have a barrier, if you will, to good, to good adhesion and we end up getting peelers at that point. So look at your, your uh catalyst situation? Are you putting too much palladium down? Are you over conditioning? Do you have poor rinsing? All of these are factors that lead to potential for the electrolyst copper to peel from the surface. Now, there's all other uh, issues with adhesion failure that we have to consider. There could be debris here on the surface that we can't see because of inadequate rinsing or, again, uh, not a, we didn't do a good job of developing the photoresist in the pattern plating process. If we left residues there that we can't see, that's going to act as a barrier, and that's going to cause the electrolytic copper to also peel. So when you see this, and especially in the pattern plating process where you've put the photoresist down, there are many reasons for, for the electrolytic uh, uh, portion of the plating to, to peel. So keep in mind when you troubleshoot this defect, you know, look at any interruptions in the current? Are you looking at situations where we didn't micro roughen or clean the surface prior to plating? Uh, that's always a situation that I look for. I look at rinsing, uh, good quality deionized water is very, very important. But again, avoid the long rinse times that can lead back to things like oxidation, which then will cause problems with uh, peelers. Now, pitting. This is another interesting situation. Pitting may or may not be considered a reject. In other words, a non-conformance as they refer to it in IPCs, IPC 600 workmanship standard. But it's still to me, when you see pitting, it is a process indicator. It indicates something is going wrong in the process and you really need to look at the reasons why it is happening. And is it 
there's a number of things that it could be. And you'll see the pits, sometimes they're random. You know, there could be on one side of the board, but not another. It could be along the circuit edges or the traces, or it could be just randomly interspersed. The concern, of course, is if the pits go all the way down to the base metal, to the base laminate, that, of course, would be a significant uh, nonconformance and then lead to a rejected um, board. Now, the first thing you have to do as troubleshooters is understand are the plating pits organic or are they inorganic in nature, meaning organic coming from things like photoresist residues, fingerprints, uh, other surface contaminations, adhesion promoters left on the surface from the photoresist, uh, incomplete developing or rinsing. And then, of course, in the next slide, you'll see that the uh, other situation that we have would be relating to things like the inorganic or what I would call air bubbles or gas bubble entrapment that can also lead to pits. But again, bubbles or air bubbles or gas bubbles are completely different mechanism and a completely different troubleshooting um, situation than if it's an organic type of pit. So again, make sure you distinguish between pits that are caused by uh, air bubbles, hydrogen gas, etc., or is it the organic that we're going to talk about now uh, in more detail. So next slide will tell you that uh, when organic residues are the cause, again, before developing, uh, resist lock-in, resist leaching, other organics in the solution, most likely the pit is going to go all the way down, as you can see, to the base metal. You'll see some plating on the sidewall here, but generally the actual pit where the contamination is is going to be right here on the base metal. And here's a good example. And when you see organic type residue pits, they are random in nature and they don't really have a shape. You see these little areas here, the pits go down to the base metal, they're random. And again, most likely there's residue there that uh, caused us to have this, this situation. Again, all photoresists could have pitting tendencies and you've got to make sure that again, the, the, when you re, uh, remove the resist that's been unexposed to developing, you've got to remove all of that uh, material from the surface and make sure that copper that you're plating on is clean and free of these types of residues. Now, when it's caused by an air bubble or a gas bubble, it may or may not go all the way down to the base metal. And typically when we see an air bubble pit or a gas bubble pit, it's typically near the edge of where the photoresist and the plating meet. Okay, and they're typically very uniform, okay, very uniform in shape. They're concave, they're spherical, and again, as I said, they could be anywhere on it, but most likely they're going to be very close to the trace of where the photoresist sidewall meets the uh, plated copper. So again, these are areas where, again, voids are generated where there's bubbles um, from poor filtration. There's other situations going on with the uh, pump cavitation in, in a plating solution that causes the pumps to introduce finely dispersed air bubbles. And those air bubbles get trapped onto the sidewalls and we end up getting pits. So there's some trip, we'll give you some tips on how to solve this particular problem uh, shortly. Here again, here is the, an example of an air bubble pit. Notice it's concave and it goes right, and you can see the pit here, and it's going lodging up right next to the sidewall of the photoresist. This is most likely when you see something like this, it is the air bubble being entrapped. So take a look at your filtration system in the, in the acid copper plating line. And what you can do is you can baffle the area around the filter pump intake so that we can minimize air being, cap, you know, air being sucked into the pump and cavitating. If you see these fine air bubbles in the plating solution, what I would suggest you do immediately if you're using air agitation is turn the solution filtration off and let the solution degas, let the air get out of there and start again. And you'd be surprised how often that fixes the problem. But there's another way of fixing this. And by the way, wetting agents, adding more chemistry to the tank is not going to help. What you can do then is if you're using air agitation, switch to what we call eductors. And eductors are a way of using mechanical agitation solution flow uh, instead of air agitation. And that eliminates the air aspect of it. It'll cost you a few dollars, a couple thousand dollars to set up eductors in your tank. If you haven't done it already, it, it, there's a lot of reasons for it. 
And here's an example of uh, two plating cells that I was involved in several years ago, two large operations. Uh, there are two uh, electrolytic copper plating cells. One was showing significant amount of pitting, and the other had no issues at all. We couldn't understand it because the two lines very similar. The only difference was one of them had eductors in it, which was this one here. And the first one was still conventional air agitation to you know, provide the solution movement in the cell. And you can see these air bubbles and you can see the foam here. This is a good indication that there's a lot of air being introduced into the plating cell. And that also was contributing to the pitting. And once this line was retrofitted with eductors, the pitting pitting went away. So there are some reasons to consider, you know, this type of agitation system if you haven't already and use solution movement so that we don't get this kind of situation where we're cavitating and introducing a lot of air into the plating cell. So finally, for us to understand, you know, know well that when you see pits and they're caused by gas bubbles, they're going to be um, very uniform, more round, more concave, and typically oriented around the circuit trace. And if it's, a, if it's an organic bubble, things like from, uh, poor rinsing, uh, resist leaching, underdevelopment, overexposure, things like that, or even orga high organics in the plating solution itself, you'll see that more random, typically if it's a fingerprint, and that will end, end up causing you a... Uh, the heartache of these pits. So again, pits are primarily a process indicator, things that I think you should fix, but if they go down to the base metal, it's most likely going to be a non-conformance and going to be rejectable.